remember, we're never fixing kids. It just says to me, you're not a leader. Their behavior between the ages of three and 12 years old, their behavior is 100% a direct result of your parenting. 20 month old daughter throws, dumps toys, how to stop teacher to pick up. Okay, use the toy rotation system. I'm gonna read out my top five tips for parenting toddlers. Um, Cause they only have, if they have too many toys out, that's what they do. They dump them all out. They walk through them. They wade through them. They're like swimming through the whole room because they don't see anything. They can't focus. They're overstimulated. There's too much clutter. Okay. So get a toy rotation system in place where you only have like five toys out. Keep the big stuff out. Like I kept blocks and you never put away stuffies or anything that's comforting. And I always kept all the books out and then the huge stuff I kept out. But all those other toys, they were all gone. Oh yeah, here's my top five tips for parenting toddlers. Number one, childproof your home so you never have to say no. Number two, set up a toy rotation system so they're never bored. I just mentioned that. Number three is when you want to connect with a toddler, you don't do it at the nail salon. You enter their world. Play hide and go seek. Go to the park. Roll down the hill with them. Enter their world. It's the start of your leadership because you're connecting with them in their world. That's when they really get it. They look at you differently. Number four is stop with the mini therapy sessions when they're naughty. You just, it's, it's consistent, corrective actions. They're not about words, okay? Toddlers are all about actions, not words. So again, it's entering their world. Respect them enough to enter their world. Don't expect a toddler to find their inner adult. That's what those mini therapy sessions are all about. Use your words. All that patronizing garbage, it's ridiculous. Okay, be more like me. Grow up. You're saying that to a two-year-old? It's ridiculous. Okay. So disrespectful. And number five, stop trying to figure them out. Toddlers are not figure outable. They're brand new, fresh human beings. They've got one marble and some tumbleweed in there. Okay, imagine if you've only been in the world for two years and that first year you were a potato laying on a mattress. Okay, they're just forming. Okay, they may even go like this and smear poop on the wall. Make sense out of that. <laughs> they just don't make any sense yet. They're just forming. Uh, he doesn't want to do simple tasks sometimes like clothes on and getting in the car. Advice, if that the four-year-old, set yourself up as a leader. That Remember, we're never fixing kids. It just says to me you're not a leader. Their behavior between the ages of 3 and 12 years old, their behavior is 100% a direct result of your parenting. A direct result. If you're a leader, there's no problems. Their behavior is 100% a direct result of your parenting. Anyway, check out my boot camp course. That's what it's all about. It's all about you and your leadership. If you're a leader, there's, everything falls into place. You lead, they will follow. Teenagers are different. Um, when they're 3 to 12 years old, not under that because they're just toddlers. They don't make any sense yet. 3 to 12 years old, they want to please you. It's a natural instinct to want, need, crave a leader and then want to please that leader because a good leader bring, like, makes them like themselves, brings out the best in them. You don't want obedient soldiers. That's stupid. My kids had a voice. Believe me, they told me what they were thinking. <laughs> but if I did something they didn't like, I heard about it. And I would often change something because I'd go, yeah, you're right. I was too tough with that. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So, yeah, they had a voice. Um, so, yeah, we're not fixing kids. He's not doing things because he doesn't respect you. That's all that is. It's always about the parents. Parents don't want that for some reason. They don't want, it's interesting. Parents, a lot, not everybody, but a lot of parents want to blame their kids instead of themselves. Like, really? You'd rather blame your kids than yourself. You'd rather make your kids responsible for their behavior than you. That doesn't make any sense at all to me. I can't even wrap my head around that. Like when I was working with kids, if they acted out under my care, under my guidance, I always went, and this is a kid, maybe I had one hour a week and they were handfuls. I never got easy kids to work with. If they acted out with me, I always said to myself, what am I missing here? What am I doing wrong? And I had them an hour a week. They weren't even my kids. Leaders take responsibility for their children. That's what a leader is. They take responsibility. So if your kid's acting out, look in the mirror, fix yourself, teach yourself. Check out my boot camp course. That's what it's all about. It's about teaching you how to become a leader in five weeks. By the way, that course, if you bought it previously, you can go back and check it out. It's got videos throughout the whole course now. All of them will eventually have videos. Two of the toddler ones have videos now, and the other two will soon. Okay, my, after my nine-year-old has her tantrums and I ignore her, let, okay, after my nine-year-old has her tantrums and I ignore her, letting her cry, when she comes back to normal, I don't know how to treat her. I am so upset with her. Oh, okay, this is what you do. So you ignore the crazy and reward the calm. A tantrum is not bad behavior. It's a loss of emotion, emotional control at not getting what they want, when they want, and how they want it. So once you understand that, okay, so it's a loss of emotional control. It's actually not bad behavior. 
I know <laughs> it seems like it is, but it isn't. Um, if it's if it is a true tantrum, anyway. So and then as soon as they're finished with the tantrum, say, "Oh, y'all done? Do you want to read a book or something?" That's how you treat them afterwards. You show them that meant nothing to me. You can't control me with that. Yeah, and you ignore the crazy and reward the calm. Attention is reward. So she's having a fit, nine years old, having a fit, having a tantrum. As soon as they calm down, oh, do you want to read a book or something or go for a walk? No, I hate you. I hate you. Okay, never mind. And then ignore when they calm down again. Ready for that walk now? It's a powerful technique. Very powerful. Stay calm. You're showing her that I love you. And as soon as you calm down, I want to connect with you. But you're not saying, hey, you're all done now. Let's go have a party. You're not like celebrating it. You're just like connecting. How does that sound to you? Does, does that resonate with you? Do you understand? There's real psychology behind that. How does that sound? Does it make sense? That you ignore the crazy and reward the calm. So as soon as you, you have to get, you said, I'm so upset with her. You have to get over that. Don't show it. If you show it, she won. She's in charge. If a kid had a tantrum and afterwards I went, I'm so upset with you. I can't believe you acted like that. Ugh, it's just a disaster. You've gone off the cliff with her. But if you go, oh, you all done? Okay, do you want to go to the park? Want to go for a walk? And then calm as anything, as if it never even happened. You never discuss a tantrum before, during, or after. What you can do is if they did something bad during the tantrum, they threw something and broke it. After they've calmed down, say, I'll tell you what, you broke the remote control, so there's going to be a consequence for that. Okay, do you understand? Do not discuss the tantrum. There is no point whatsoever. Um, some people say you have to, and a lot of people argue with me, but they're wrong. Never discuss a tantrum before, during, or after. There's no point, none whatsoever. And once you're a calm leader, it calms them down. The tantrums go away when you're a leader. They just do. How do you give kids allowance essentially for free without breeding entitlement issues? Um, I talk about that a lot. Go and check out, oh, it's on TikTok, I think. I did a video, oh, geez, maybe a year ago. Uh, allowance versus chores. I've talked about it a lot. But um, they entitlement, oh, gosh. Uh, because they got chores, so there's no sense of entitlement. Uh, yeah, my, you keep chores and allowance completely separate. All children deserve how to um, manage, save, and respect money. And you do so by giving them allowance with no expectations. And you just do it. You just pay them just because they're on this earth. They have to learn how to manage money. So you're teaching them how to do that. And you write it in a book. You're, look up my videos. I've got lots of videos on that on allowance for kids and how you do it. But they don't have entitlement issues because they have chores. They have responsibilities. I have no memory of ever telling my kids to do homework. They knew that was a responsibility. Plus, if you're going to follow someone for parenting advice, um, and this is really good advice, actually, uh, it's just like dieting. You've got to pick one source. Because if you were to mix up different diet things, like, oh, she said that, he said that, it's like parenting. It's like a method. It's got to be used together. It's like a system. So like if you were to throw timeout into my method, my leadership stuff, it would tank because I think timeout's mean and I teach giving respect to get it. So I think timeout's horrible. It's humiliating. It teaches them nothing except how to feel like crap about themselves sitting in the corner. That's all it's teaching them. Hey, I'm crap. I'm sitting here because I'm a piece of crap. I hate it. So if you were to pick and choose what you like from different parenting people or experts or whatever you want to call them, uh, you got to pick, just go with one. If it, and then go with that person for three weeks or whatever. If it's not working, go, well, that's say, oh, well, she's stupid and move on to someone else. Also, there's two criteria that I would look out for. If you're looking for parenting advice, make sure that they have these two criteria. They have to have finished the job with their own kids. If they haven't lived with uh, teenagers and raised them to adulthood, how can they teach parenting? How do you know if what you're doing when they're little is how is it going to pay off down the road? Because a lot of stuff, they build resentment. You're building resentment. And uh, a lot of people don't know that. They find out later on. Anyway. So that's one. They have to finish the job with their own kids. Second one is they have to work with hundreds of kids. I didn't learn much with my own kids. It was all the other hundreds of kids I worked with, with all sorts of challenges and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, those are the two criteria. Look out for that. So, And then uh, if they've got those two criteria, then give them a go. They might. They, and, and also, if you're not resonating with me, move on to someone else because you're not going to do what I say anyway. So you're wasting your time. 
I want you to enjoy parenting and get the best results possible, whether it's with me or with someone else, doesn't matter to me. I want you to get really good results. I want you to enjoy parenting as much as I did. 